music. For a minute at a time With John and Will And I guess you just rhyme It's Bad Minutes Hello and welcome once again to Bat Minute Returns The podcast where we gaze in amazement of the emerging of Tim Burton's 1992 Batman film Batman Returns one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And rising from the slimy filth below <laughs> to glory, it is I, John Parker, wizard of Foon. Uh, <laughs> are you a uh, wizard? <laughs> uh, yes, I am the... Uh, never mind. Oh, goodness, goodness gracious. I am Phil. On the spot, I've forgotten it all. <laughs> I'm Phil. I'm back. I'm back for the third time. I was really hoping you would keep the wizard voice going for the whole. Oh, <laughs> okay. Um, why? Well, yes, I. It's a bit of an Alec Guinness. A little. Bit. <laughs> oh, a little bit. A little bit. It's perfect. Oh, thank you. Thank. This is like quite Alex Robinson's. Uh, Alec Guinness just sliding into Ringo Starr which <laughs> just, after a while just became flat out Ringo Starr all, every time Ringo Starr no that's not Ringo Starr that's, that's more John right it it does upset kind me of. even though I'm not from Liverpool I live here it does upset me though when people think that's oh that's a Liverpool accent it's like n- nobody sounds like that anymore here no, not even slightly not even slightly okay <laughs> okay Anywho, uh, Anywho, we're here to talk about local dialect and uh, also minute 36 of Batman Returns, which begins with the uh, the duck taking flight and it ends one minute later with the, the penguin laying out his demands. Uh, so somewhat. And we, get a, we get a bit of uh, Bruce's bland bemusement, <laughs> I like to call it. He looks kind of like... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Although yes. if you want to talk about the different friggin' reactions, we get a buttload of them from these extras who are. Oh like, yes, they, geez, they they must have been paid this day <laughs> the way that they're going for it. But I guess uh, we should probably talk now because we got to see the duck in all its glory oh. here. Uh, I know, John, you were saying you had some notes on the duck. If you want to, well, sort of. As in, I just wanted to talk about something scouse. Something Liverpudly. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. We, there is, of course, a different kind of duck boat. Mm. Uh, now, we, we had one here in Liverpool. Uh, it was called the Yellow Duck Marine. Hmm. And it was a repurposed Second World War landing craft. And they're, they're called a duck boat. Mm. Whoa. Uh, it doesn't look like a duck. <laughs> Let me just say that. It doesn't look like this. But it's called the same thing. And it was a popular thing for tourists and kids to go on, like on the River Mersey. Uh, but it sank into the river multiple times. Yeah. So, so the company multiple had to times. basically just shut up operation and they went out of business. Yeah. Because it was just, it, nobody died, so we can laugh at it now. It was just hilarious seeing these tourists and things just slowly sinking into the river. <laughs> oh, wow. But then, I think it happened like twice in one week, didn't it? They had a whole big thing. Yeah. Like, oh my God, this happened. Oh, it's okay, though. They're taking the boat back out. And then like a day later, it's, oh my God, it sank again. <laughs> <laughs> it was hilarious. It was such a staple of the city as well. You'd see it all the time, and now it's just gone. Yeah. It's dead. Particularly too, if you're sinking into the friggin' the Mersey River, which is out in like the the <laughs> northwest of England, which is like cold and blustery on the best of days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is not a warm city. Yeah, but particularly out open, over open water. <laughs> it's like a... wow, wow. <laughs> that always made me laugh. Uh, but but this type of duck boat, like it, it somehow. It rises. We get the grand penguin ascension. You know, he's lifted into the air with this mechanism. Do do these sort of boats have that mechanism as standard? Like, what what is this thing? Why does it go... Has he put that on it? Well, the thing is, it's decorated in little carnival-ish kind of little designs and stuff. So it seems as if that would have been part of the whole Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was implied. Yeah. So what would it be used for in a carnival context? Well... 
<laughs> <laughs> no idea. No idea. And maybe it was for rescue operations. If someone was trapped in the Ferris wheel, they had to get them down. They would Quick, bring, get and the they, duck! Yeah, they just wanted to be like merry looking. So it's like, yeah, we gotta, we, we made this thing that the duck can do as well. <laughs> Even though we previously saw the duck hanging off wires in... Like the other, you know, when we saw it zooming through Arctic World. So it's like, also it has two things. I thought it was like a kind of rotating duck ride that you just got sat on. But I guess they had multiple ducks. I wonder as well, does the chair in there, does that have a little lifting mechanism as well? Because. Oh, yes, totally. That's what I was thinking when I was a kid. Because to get to the the top of that, you know, the the head's (laughs) going to bump into the roof of the sewer. And the penguin's still just going to be standing. But he is lifted fully up into public view. So yeah, there must be yeah. an additional little thing to be like, all right, uh, we've got one wench is hoisting us up the whole ship, and then the other one's like, no, it hoists, hoists you up another couple of feet, apparently. That's a very elaborate system. Yeah. Like, on what what use would it have? I don't understand this thing. Um, look, Tim Burton movie, this, this, I don't know. I mean, like, it's all about the emotion. It's all about how you're feeling with this and 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 yeah. how the look is like this composition is great when he was rising from the manhole like in my opinion it's beautiful i love it mm. it i think that's the thing isn't it tim burton he it's a bit in a weird way it's a bit like someone else we always bring up it's like david lynch yeah. <laughs> well there you go as in he's he's thinking about the way the way it's gonna make you feel the way it's gonna look on the screen yeah. <laughs> that, that's it like this is gonna look great and it's going to be impactful yep. they, the, if this duck was in a David Lynch movie though there'd be like articles upon articles written about what does the duck mean and why is the... <laughs> yeah. yeah 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 what are off a duck's back? yeah but absolutely like but I think that you know people who like doing that um, who like just reading into it please do I think it's it's great exercise and like just uh, discovering like hidden ideas or just new ideas that you yeah. would have yeah. But yeah, yeah. Um, and and also I I do I love like non logical things that just look great and uh, I used to um, I, I would like to still like later on but like I used to when I was younger make a lot of movies and people you know, sometimes ask me when they were making them like why is this happening and I'm like it looks cool. Um, <laughs> But I'm That's not. That's better answer than what most people come <laughs> but up. Yeah, with. but I'm not saying that to disregard the fact that um, logic and consistency are very important as well. So I'm not I'm not dissing the other side of the coin because I believe I think that they're both. As long as it makes sense in the world of the movie yeah yeah that's what matters to me it doesn't have to make sense in our world mm. yes ab- absolutely if you're yeah this is part of um trying to you know keep you in the suspension of this belief all these different elements um are put into the movie to make you believe it's actually happening but let's keep talking about the platform yes <laughs> no well, uh, also not though the the duck itself the reason why it's you know in the movie uh, is that you know this this was a leftover thing that's in you know Daniel Waters' original draft that he has the duck boat, but apparently it seems to have been put in as part of a studio mandate, uh, given the, you know, the the illustrator, the guy who designed it, the uh, Jacques Ray, uh, apparently mentioned that yeah this was uh, for merchandising purposes that the uh, Warner Brothers insisted that the villain have some sort of marketable, uh, accessorizable vehicle that they could make a toy out of but and so it's a we duck get, yeah we got the duck boat <laughs> so i guess maybe you could say like oh that's tim burton kind of knocking them back i was like all right you want a freaking you want a, a goddamn accessory here you go it's a rubber duck what are you gonna do with that <laughs> i said what does it do it has, it has a platform that it raises itself on <laughs> there you go <laughs> wow well for me it was always the duck boat being um just a a symbol of the penguin's youth when he was a child because you know and that like i said in the previous episode the juxtaposition is disturbing to me when i was a kid at least now it's like eh. (laughs) i never i never felt that myself i was like yeah this is a cute little it is a weird that yeah some this hideous penguin guy is like driving around this little cutesy duck but that never affected me in any Interesting. Yeah. I think it's supposed to be scary because it's not scary. A bit like the way I I don't really like in that Annabelle movie, the way the doll Yes, yes. It looks like a scary doll. It's rubbish. And that's not scary. Yeah. 
<laughs> like the real doll it's based on is scarier because it doesn't look scary. Exactly. It's, it's, oh, it's an innocent little doll. Well, not little. It's an innocent big it's doll. It's quite large. It's huge, <laughs> isn't it? It's crazy. And, um, but that's what makes it creepy. Yeah. But just this kid's thing is like staring at you and it's like, oh. Yeah, you... People don't have faith in in telling, you know, the story, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, oh, it has yeah, to be scary. Yeah. Rah, 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 but no, 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 it doesn't have to be. It's all about how you present these things, my friend. Exactly, exactly. And like um, in the other one, the nun, well, the nun character in general, the, the demon that the nun's supposed to be doesn't look like an evil nun in the stories. It's supposed to look like, um, like a child. Oh. Which... I think that, you know, there's, pl- I understand why they didn't do it. There's plenty of movies with creepy kids, but you could, you don't have to make it into a, a demon. Nun. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's a bit too obvious. The thing it? is yeah, though, they, yeah. they, they, those Conjure movies, they, they're not exactly the most deft handed at subtlety. Is the thing, <laughs> yeah. So. yeah. I quite like them, but they're, they're not subtle in the slightest. <laughs> no. um, I haven't seen any of them. Sorry. Oh, that's not, you're not missing all that much to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I assumed so. Yeah, some of them are all right. The, the first one's good, I think. And the second one's okay. Okay. But, uh, but uh, anywho, um, just trying to remember. Ooh. Oh, we talk about the duck oh, boat. Yeah, the, 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 oh, yeah, the duck boat. Uh, yeah. And the music building as the as uh, our Pengi rises. Mm. I'm calling him Pengi from now on. I also, also note, though, the, uh, the, the guy, uh, <laughs> Jacques Ray, who, the illustrator who designed the duck, uh, also had a terrific career. Um, very really? prominently worked on The Fifth Element. Did a lot of designs for oh. that. Oh, you can look up. Uh, it did, makes sense. He's French. Yeah, they did a lot of the uh, you know the costumes for Chris Tucker and stuff. You see his original designs for that. Oh. I'm sure Crystal Beth probably talked about all of this on the fifth. Oh, album. I am sure. Mm. I've listened to the show, but I can't actually remember <laughs> that specific. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, also worked on. Uh, this was actually his second job. His one previous credit was Hook, uh, and then went on to work on Baby's Day Out, Casper. Mars Attacks and Independence Day, which is... Wow, this all kind of makes sense. Yeah. And then uh, Batman Robin, Men in Black, Planet of the Apes, so him and Tim, both with that oh, and good. Mars Attacks, so I guess he, he likes them. Yeah. Uh, then he worked uh, on Seven as well, and then his, his final job seems to have been in on the uh, the first Fantastic Four, the like the Jessica Alba Fantastic Four. And then I don't know if he retired or what he does, or he's, maybe he's dead. I don't know, but he's he does not appear thus after in the, the world of films, unfortunately. Oh, uh, but he gave us Chris Tucker in the Fifth Element and this duck boat. So the well, that that's enough of a legacy. You don't need to do oh, it. It's true. It's yeah. true. One hundred percent. But uh, but yeah, as you're saying that. It's, no, I I. Oh no, I was just gonna say because you were saying the the penguin now rises into uh well it's like before that. I do kind of want to talk a little bit about these extras because they're really freaking. They're, yeah. they're, they're, they're trying so hard. <laughs> they're really going for No, I love that actually. I was going to mention something about them. I like the way. Look, they're, they're like scared, fascinated, and amazed all at yeah. once. I think that's a really cool thing to capture because, mm-hmm. like, the penguin of the sewer, he not only exists, but he appears to be a hero. Mm. Do they mm. think, oh, is this a new Batman? <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks a little weird but okay he's a new batman yeah. he's he's gonna he's this odd character who's gonna help the city yeah who, who do we have here because the lower guy and a flat cap who's very like he seems very disgusted by everything he's really like oh my god <laughs> he look, he's got a bit of a kind of gilbert godfrey face going on he's like, oh, oh, no, i can't yeah, believe yeah, yeah. that's that, that called a baby uh, he's sat next to a woman who looks remarkably like uh, Lynn Shea from, like, you know, uh, Bob Shea's sister, the guy who runs uh, New Line Cinema, but it, Lynn Shea's a great character actress in her own right. Ah. Uh, apparently, he actually works a lot with Jack Nicholson as well. Oh, there but, you go. Uh, who, most people know her from the Insidious movies. She's like that old All psychic right. woman in the Insidious movies. Looks loads like her. Next to a guy who looks, I thought was Ricky from Die Hard with a Vengeance, but apparently, <laughs> I think it's just some guy. <laughs> Uh, and then yeah, there's one there's there's one non white person. Like this like this lily white world of modern Gotham mm-hmm. where everyone's Caucasian, there is one Asian woman. So like there you there go. She is. Tim Burton throwing in a bit of diversity there for you. <laughs> um and then uh, there's a the most glib looking guy in the world though, who does not look like he gives any kind of a crap. <laughs> who's standing wearing his long tweed overcoat and a flat cap, who's just looking kinda Oh like, Leo DiCaprio? Uh-huh. 
Is that DiCaprio? Yeah. Oh, he's making his debut. Like him. Oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> now that's bit... canon. It is him. I would say he actually looks a bit like Fabrizio from Titanic. Like Ty- oh, uh, yeah, Leo's yeah, okay. mate. Oh, Fabrizio. You have to do it really exaggerated. Yeah. Because if it turns out he survived all these years, he still does <laughs> Or maybe this is the ghost of Fabrizio. He made it to America. <laughs> now he's wandering the streets of Gotham. Yeah. He finally made it to America. Yep. I do not like what I see. <laughs> Let's take a screenshot of this guy. I actually sent it to the Titanic Minute series. Why like, not? Here he is, Fabrizio. He made it. He finally um, made it. <laughs> and then uh, there's one guy, though, over then in the far left, who's got uh, some red-rimmed specks. And I think I find out who this guy is. Superman. Oh, yes. Yes. Yeah, that was him. This is the secret Clark Kent cameo of the. Of course. <laughs> uh, no, no. Um, there is uh, in the list of the you know, the IMDb, uh, they do have a credit for uh, one one guy at the very bottom, and I think it's him. He looks a bit like him. Uh, the game. The guy's name is uh, Mark Taramino, uh, and actually did go on to have you know quite a few things, uh, but most notably he was in Child's Play three. Uh, Newsies There you go Friggin Newsies yeah. Rearing its head again What's yeah, that the fourth Newsies. time We've talked about Newsies Fifth time maybe I think you were on One of the last times We talked about <laughs> Newsies as well Phil I think you were uh, Like Newsies episode two Or whatever yeah. Phil brings out The Newsie in me Yeah uh, he's also I do uh, In I know your girlfriend Big fan John He's in Ghost Adventure Or Ghost oh, Adventures yeah. Ghost Adventures Yeah yeah. yeah. She is and a big qu- fan I, I have bought a one of Zach Bagan's books in the past as well. Oh, she, you have given though. You're not going to air this, and then the secret will be out. It's not a surprise for Christmas. <laughs> no, no, no she thing. she has read the book. Yeah. Oh, well, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, and yeah, then uh, most notably, he's in uh, the movie How to Vejaculate. If you build it, she will come. What? Which was yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> Assumed was just flat out porn, but it has Wanda Sykes in it. <laughs> So the famous comedian Wanda Sykes. I was like, I guess it must be a comedy then. <laughs> if Wanda Sykes uh, is in it. I, I don't know. I'm kind of scared to look it up. <laughs> so you know Wanda Sykes? That's Wanda from Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's all like, damn it, Larry. Like that that short, angry Wanda. <laughs> so I can't imagine her being in a porno, but you never know. You know, Maybe she fell on hard times. But <laughs> or, may, or maybe she's expressing herself. Yeah, well, yeah, you never know. Maybe, she's, maybe she put up the, the money for it. She's like, yeah, I desperately want to be in a porn movie. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, as we were saying there, the uh, penguin comes into public view. Everyone very he does uh, very you know sort of shocked and standing back, except for that the uh, Fabrizio there, who is very casually hands in pockets, <laughs> just like uh huh, just kind of <laughs> casually drifting backwards. It's like, dude, can you not have any emotion? How much are they paying you to be in this movie as an extra? You got a couple hundred bucks out of this. Well, yeah, again, that reminds me of Twin Peaks though, because I liked it, but some people were criticizing. That scene in uh, Twin Peaks: The Return, when the child gets ran over, and the, the, some of the actors in the background look like they don't really know what's going on. <laughs> they're, they're barely wow. emoting. They're just like, "Oh, oh, that's a shame." Oh. Well, spiritually, I guess it's a similar scene because a lot of people thought this kid might have been dead. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. David Lynch was inspired by this scene in Batman Return. <laughs> But yeah, and I do love actually the uh, the way the music goes because it's kind of giving you the the penguin theme. Yes, the more brazen major key. Yeah, yeah. More. a little bit. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, so you get that you know. It's like oh, here we go. Heroic penguin has has arrived. Very. The thing is, he was pretty good with the baby down the sewer. Like he seemed to have a knack for kids. It seems a bit more awkward the way he's holding it here. Uh, yeah, so. yeah. And then uh, yeah, it steps off the platform. I do love the instant performance because he's gone into this very pained expression of the, the lights flashing. Oh yes, yes, yes. Uh, the lights flashing, and then giving the baby away, and then doing that thing with his hands, like oh, yeah, like, oh don't, don't look at me, don't, 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 yeah. don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> But what I really love, though, and it really becomes very apparent, is how much of an insane level setup this is. Because the penguin, you know, has the the baby to the mayor, instantly sort of goes into a little backward stance, and then all out of nowhere, as if he was already there, Max Shrek is just slided up next to him, and all the ca- all the photographs <laughs> yes, have been taken. Yes. And then the, the mayor himself almost—he seems kind of baffled. Like he kind of—he's accidentally walked into this prime photo op 
And he's got a bit like, wait, what's happening? <laughs> like, well, apparently people are taking photos already. <laughs> you do wonder, like, the Shrek, yep. that he have a couple of, like, oh, guys, you want to bring your, your cameras. There's going to be some pictures you're going to want to take and <laughs> keep spreading the word to. Or does he just know how to play this game so much? It's like, they'll be taking them here. I just need to know exactly to stand him in this yeah. spot. That's going to be the I think best that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, he would. Yeah, yeah. That's He's used it. to it. That, this, is his, this is his arena. Yeah, yeah, I do appreciate the, this much more. Like, it seems like this kind of stuff of like the the blatant photo op would have been much more played up in the Dan Waters sort of original draft because he was very much going for like yeah. a broad social satire. Like, he was really, really emphatic about like you know about about this been about you know corrupt businessman and you know the the penguins underneath right. Wall, Wall Street. You know, friggin' uh, cell taping back together people's papers and stuff like that. And he was very much like, because uh, again, he did, you know, the political hierarchy of high schools and Heathers when he wrote that. So he's kind of, it would be almost like a a, a rolling sort of progression to be like, yeah, now I'm doing uh, broad comic book city politics as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but the, it's sort of, the, so the, the kind of humor of the fact that this is so, like, incredibly uh, set up as a, as a shot for the papers uh, it, it it only really occurred to me like oh yeah it's pretty funny the way that's done <laughs> but it's so subtle in the movie in passing unless you're watching it a minute at a time I wouldn't have got that but I can imagine if they had gone with the original script you would have had that really hammered into you so and I do kind of like at the end of this though just because of the, the whole the business of the, them with the baby I was kind of hoping like Shrek would make a little speech and then at the end he'd just be like and baby Gerald we can't help but wonder what mischief you'll get into next. <laughs> yeah. And just like the baby That's <laughs> great. just glaring at him. <laughs> <laughs> it is almost exactly like <laughs> That's good. It's like Apu appears. It's like oh, ba- Batman one time helped me when the <laughs> When I was going outside to get the paper naked, and then my pa- towel blew off, and da, 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 da. whatever that scene. <laughs> I yeah, bust the joke. Could, I'll maybe that could have happened to to Shrek. There, his uh, his coat could have blown off, and it turned out he had nothing under the coat. Oh, and, uh, I, I can't imagine a man as oh. immaculately tailored as Max Shrek is going to go <laughs> go anywhere without the, the the best of suits. Oh wow, <laughs> that's what he wants you to think. Little do you know, he's he's nude under that. Oh no, the good guy never takes off his freaking gloves. So I mean, if I, <laughs> that, that's all he keeps on in the bedroom. <laughs> I'll be great if it was like, yeah, Max Shrek was a never nude, <laughs> and he actually did the only thing he kept on all the time with his gloves. He's like, oh, as long as I got this, I'm okay. But <laughs> hey, uh, sexy. Anywho, um, so yeah, it actually, is we we've asked people if Devito, <laughs> jokingly, we've asked people if Devito is sexy. Um, have we asked anyone and... if Walken is sexy? Oh yeah, we we asked a couple Did of people. We? Walk Walken is sexy. They seem to always get uh, a, a bit of a no. <laughs> what? Yeah. Also, well, so, as, as you appear shocked, Phil, would you say that Chris Walken is a sexy guy? Well, I'm being pretty good looking at suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, the suit, the suit does, the suit, the clothes make the man, you know, so he does, the suit is impre- improving things quite a bit, but. Yeah, and, and and the gray hair, it really, it it, 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 it suits, it suits his face very well. <laughs> <laughs> it does indeed. We've been, we've been baffled, though, as to what friggin' age Max Shrek is supposed to be, because he's got, like, the hair of a crazy 60-year-old scientist, <laughs> but Chris Walken himself looks like he's about, like, maybe maybe 40 like at, at the most <laughs> right yeah. um well maybe he's I mean, he looks a little bit like uh razal ghoul and if mm-hmm. you would do that no nah, it's a bit stupid never mind forget what i said <laughs> got it out take it out of the podcast <laughs> I, I liked where that was going. I was interested. I could have tied in the, yeah? okay. the, the the Lazarus pit full of cats that we were talking about the other minute. <laughs> there you go. Age, ageless. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, then we cut then to Meanwhile in Stately Wayne Manor. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, put the sound effect in. Yeah, we were talking about like earlier in the week, like, oh, it seems we've gone a month without talking about uh, the penguin. Because he was like, oh, yeah, it disappeared for like a large section of the movie. So uh, well, in terms of the amount of minutes we recorded, it was at least four weeks. But who was disappeared even longer than that was friggin' the title character, Batman himself. <laughs> Batman. Here he yeah. is. Good. I am another lucky person to have all three of these episodes contain all three of the main characters, including ah. Max Shrek. Oh, yeah. That's four. 
Oh, do, you, do you have a favorite character in the movie? Because let's be honest, most people's isn't Batman. Mm. No. I mean, his suit is the, is pretty good. It's better than the one from 89. Sorry. Um, it is. No, it's definitely an improvement. Like, you can see mm-hmm. they've made an effort to help him. Yeah. <laughs> like, help him move. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm, I'm just going to be really, like, super boring and just be like, Catwoman. <laughs> That's not boring. She's awesome in this film. Yeah. I think that's the problem, though. That's it. it ruins Catwoman for me because I saw this Catwoman first. So any other Catwoman, I'm like, yeah, it's not the same. Mm. <laughs> it's not as good. Yeah. 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 But is there a reason true. that Catwoman will be your favorite film? Or? Well, um, she's, she's pretty attractive. I mean, come on. <laughs> no, <laughs> but other than that, I, yeah, but other than that, um, I would have to say that uh, I think that what she goes through within uh, this story is the most uh, concise and I feel like it's the most um, uh, tr- like truthful in in, the, in a way that it's like you feel the pain that she's in you know throughout the whole thing and how conflicted she is mm. yeah it's definitely more interesting that she's not just evil isn't it yeah that's right and Penguin is just a jerk you know <laughs> <laughs> sometimes oh, yeah. there's yeah sometimes there's some pathos to him and that's what I felt when I was a kid I, that's what got me a little disturbed because it felt sad as it did feel disturbing and creepy and that all these mixes of emotions that I felt when I was a child but at this point I watched this like maybe three more times when I was an adult and I watched it you know recently and I just think Penguin's a jerk oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a jerk he's hamming it up uh, mm. but anywho uh, in the stately Wayne manner uh, oh sorry Phil, let's see. Yes. do you have anything else you I want I yeah, I wanted I wanted to mention uh, Wayne Manor. Oh okay. yeah, oh go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh, you, if you notice, I mean, of course, the geography is completely changed, and it's a different Ma- Wayne Manor. I don't know what you guys thought about that because I didn't get to listen to those episodes yet, as they are as of right now unaired. No. Um, as I I think they are right. Yeah. They're, they're yeah. Not, yeah. I can't listen to them yet. Okay, fine. Um, <laughs> we can send you a private link. No, we don't. I don't think we've edited it yet. Anyway, 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 the wide shot here. Another. There's another. Like again, there's these thick uh, shadows. These thick, sharp shadows that we get uh, from the window. And um, again, this is very, uh, very cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Very expressionistic. Very stylized mm. in that regard. Yeah. Um, that's just what I noticed. Mm. Oh, no, it is a, uh-huh. Even for like a, you know, Tim Burton ain't gonna skimp on any shots when he can. If he has to do a grand establishing shot of Main, Wayne Manor, it's gonna be yep. It's gonna look weird and it's gonna look very distinct <laughs> and it's gonna be very influenced by again German expressionism and all his his yeah. little passions and stuff and. Uh, so it's a little passion sounds very condescending to Tim Burton. There. Yeah, it sounded <laughs> insulting. Oh, his little passion. <laughs> all the things he cares about. <laughs> Uh, Ugh, Tim. Well, no, though, the scene there, like, this establishing shot, Alfred there doing the entire Christmas tree by himself. Wonder if he's. Gonna... That's my note. <laughs> All on his own. Yeah. He's an old guy up a stepladder. I'm scared. <laughs> <laughs> That's like what well, we know from the past movie. Bruce Wayne doesn't care about this guy. <laughs> he's just... No, he's busy in he the corner doesn't. brooding. Mm. Mm. It's in Bru- That's right. Bruce Wayne walking over to the television. What appears to be, if you. My eagle eye trying to make out appears to be like a tankard of some sort it looks as if he's holding mm. like a is it, it's just like it's friday it's it's 10 past six according to the giant clock on the wall <laughs> Wait, <laughs> time to get yeah, just put my feet up in front of this giant fire that goes higher than his head <laughs> <What is that? laughs> yeah yeah i mean castles get cold you gotta really Pump yeah. up the fire yeah. there. Well, that is a big problem. I think I might have talked about this uh, last season. That is a big problem with castles and uh, stately homes, as we call them in the UK. You know, the big fancy manors and things. Mm. Oh yes, the stately homes. Stately. Oh, that was a, that was a great accent. Wasn't it? <laughs> oh, thanks. I mean, look, I can I can just talk like this all the time. You are you a know? master um, of the accents. Well, thanks. All thanks. accents. It's just yeah. oh, well, come on, come on. <laughs> Right. Every accent I've heard you do, I'm sure there's some you crap at. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone I've heard you do has been fantastic. Oh, but uh, well, it is a problem with stately homes is heating them. So a lot of people who own them, they might be lords and whatnot, but they actually don't have a lot of money because it costs so much to fund it. So that's why they open them up to the public, and you can pay like a few pounds to walk around the grounds and have a look. <laughs> 
That's so weird. <laughs> That's weird. I was wondering, though, yeah. like, as a tour group came through here now, and they're like, yeah, this is the, the giant's bonfire in the fireplace <laughs> where we burned the previous year's Christmas tree. And, uh, <laughs> and here we have uh, Bruce Wayne and his butler making the new Christmas. Oh, wait, no, it's just the butler. <laughs> <laughs> just the butler. Yeah, Bruce is just kicking back, apparently. <laughs> I'd like to as well just point out this TV that Bruce is watching. Okay, he's a millionaire. Billionaire, even. But that's a, a big TV for the time. Oh, yeah. It's quite large, yeah. Huh? Yeah, it's huge. Like, I, I mean, I was, I'm was i not a wealthy man. But, you know, my TV back then was probably... <laughs> I'm trying to think. What would, what would the TV be back then? It was it was under probably 24 inches. Probably 21 inch TV, maybe? Yeah. Maybe less yeah. than that, actually. It'd be less. It's got one of those... Yeah great things where uh people at the time obviously thought things were going to go one way and they went the other way so it's very boxy it's like look how big the Mm, back is and like they didn't realize like oh no 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 it's going to be your your fancy tvs are going to be as flat as anything it's like (laughs) no where where would the ray tube go what you're talking about (laughs) yeah right right nowadays this would be a slightly curved razor thin thing that you know was bigger than the entire fireplace or something that that would be the tv (laughs) that's right that would be the TV. Yeah, but for this time, especially because I mean, it's hard to determine what era this is set in, that's one hell of a television. I'm impressed, Bruce. <laughs> yeah, um, to be honest, like that kind of television gives me nostalgic uh, feelings. Yeah, there's there's something to be said for that. I'm currently playing um, the Street Fighter 2 uh, collection. Well, Street Fighter Anniversary Collection, not just 2. And you can you can put scan lines on the screen, so you can you can have it just as is, or you can put the lines that you would get from a CRT television, ah, nice. or the lines you get from an arcade cabinet. Mm. Oh, I there's know. a and the difference. The arcade cabinet's my favorite because it's kind of in between the two. It's not quite as strong, but it's got that nice little effect. And yeah, it's like oh, so nostalgic. It just takes you yeah, back man. instantly. Yeah. yeah, the shape of this uh, television in particular. Um, I remember, you know, like we, I used to visit quite a few people like when I was a kid, you know, like, cause my parents were missionaries. So we used to visit families, mm. uh, a lot in the States in Midwestern uh, Indiana, Midwestern Indiana, I mean, <laughs> Midwestern United States. <laughs> and, um, I, I, I remember very fondly the, um, the times when it was, you know, the early nineties and I was very young and you know, usually they would have a basement and in the basement would be a giant television sometimes. And uh, it was always an interesting moment and like really exciting moment for me when it, when it was like a flat screen, you know what I mean? It wasn't bubbled. Yeah. It was, it was that, uh, that flat uh, thing and, and where everywhere you would move, you know, different angles, it would always kind of darken because yeah. of, uh, yeah, the quality of the screen that uh, that was being used. So it just reminds me of watching, honestly, Empire Strikes Back. I remember watching that very vividly at someone's house in the basement with that big giant screen. It's amazing. Oh, that would have been good. Yeah, and everybody had stupid sweaters. <laughs> <laughs> As you should. Yeah. The thing is, though, okay. because mm-hmm. of modern day emulators and stuff, like what John's talking about, you get the benefits of like, oh, you get this nostalgic thing where you don't have the pain in the ass of having to actually deal with things like yeah. because like I've, I've had to move a couple of houses a few years back with a tv not dissimilar to this one and it's like lifting those things it's like it's a two-man job like it's oh, the thing is like nowadays i got a little flat screen thing it's like i can just carry it up the road myself <laughs> it's just like put it under your arm and you yeah. walk away <laughs> Absolutely, um, which is why uh, Tommy Wiseau is a very strong man in the room. For... It's the only reason that's there is like I want to show how buff I am. <laughs> just... Yeah, ah! <laughs> he did used to be crazy buff. Did it? It's weird looking at him now because he looks like a completely different guy. His physique is yeah, so different. Yeah, he looks like a raisin now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I know he must be getting quite old, I guess. But <laughs> who knows? We don't know. We don't know. Was... That's. He was built back the then. Thing that you, you say that, though, because we still don't know what age he is. It's like Tommy Wiseau no. turned 35 this year or something. It's like, as far as well, I know, we do know his age. maybe he did. We do know his age. He goes, I, I Greg's age. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Same age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't think so. Uh, Tommy Wiseau about as trustworthy as, uh, as Max Shrek or <laughs> as the Penguin here and what he's about to come out with and his... Although we don't really get this. Mm, yeah. That's more next week we get to talk about what the Penguin actually says. Well, he announces his return to the world. He says, all I want in return, 
What? Uh, what is it? What does he want? We don't know. The minute's ended. I'm. Well, I mean, yeah, but um, what's wonderful is that, you know, that's one of the words from the title. Of the <laughs> yes. It's like what I want, what the penguin wants in return. And then Batman's watching like, ain't you a movie buddy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm returning. God damn it. Not you. Actually, I, I, I really hope we haven't said this because I've just had a revelation that there's more than one return in this film. Oh. It, all three of the characters return. I guess so, yeah. Maybe that's... Uh, oh, well. One of that was... That's something you can't really call the three people in a movie return. So it's like, now we better mow this down. <laughs> Batman, he's the, the main guy returning. Yeah, it's the Batman series, mm. and it, this the theme of this episode is returning. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is returning as well is actually uh, Bruce's casual uh, kicking back cravat that he's got tucked into yeah. his... Because uh, <laughs> remember, we talked about that like when Alfred was calling him in the first movie, we're like, hey, he's wearing a cravat just hanging about the house. Like, what is, surely you want to like, geez, dude, you put on your pajama bottoms, you wear a t-shirt, just kick back. <laughs> well, Alfred's dressed him, <laughs> right? Let's be honest. He's dressed him. He's chosen this because that's his, uh, his culture, his way of doing things. He's a proper butler. Mm. Bruce just goes, yeah, all right, whatever, put it on. <laughs> Do you think maybe Alfred keeps that there? Because when he's, when Bruce is going out and Alfred's like, I need to clean his face. So he takes out the cravat and does spits in it and wipes his cheeks and then stuffs the cravat back in. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 well. I like the I like the the um, the lens that they were using for uh, that shot of uh, Bruce Wayne looking mm. at the television. It's very '90s to me. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. So it, you wouldn't really get that sort of shot in the last movie, I don't think. No. Well, because it's Christmas. That's the whole, you know. Well, yeah. But so. Gotham kind of looked like it was bloody Christmas time all the time in the last one. <laughs> yeah. All the steam and stuff. Yeah, this always looked like it. I think we last movie we discovered it was it was it was around Halloween, wasn't it? Because it has that deleted scene of the little yeah. girl. I'm like, is it Halloween? But anyway, <laughs> let's not try to. Oh, that was such an awful deleted scene. Um, but yeah, of course, then we get to still in the background, Alfred toiling away there. This is a fact. Look, that's such a huge tree. Look how many lights. That's a, he must have been working on that since like last Christmas. That's crazy how fucking. Yeah, it's like a annual, like a year long hobby. <laughs> See, I love Christmas. It's one of my favorite times of year. But I always Me too. overestimate the the time it takes to do the tree, and and you know I grossly misjudge the fun in doing the tree. It's not fun. <laughs> it's not remotely fun. It it's tedious and boring. It's great when it's yeah. finished. But not when you're doing. Oh, we had fun one year though. When we were again, when we were students, and there was a reason we we're having fun was because we were drinking while we were doing it. But well, that's <laughs> the only way to make it interesting. I, last year, I'd mulled Wait, wine. I put some Christmas music on. You know. But the, we actually did a thing where um, cause we, we had a bunch of just old cans we had. Instead of putting on your tinsel and whatnot, we cut up the cans with uh, Stanley knives <laughs> and strung them out, and then put them up as the the tinsel around the tree. It actually looked really nice. <laughs> well, the okay. It was weird. The end was like, oh, this looks pretty good. <laughs> So if you're an alcoholic and you want to save a bit of money this Christmas, <laughs> you can just cut up your old beer yeah. cans. And... <laughs> I love this yeah. idea. It, it wasn't it was Marion's idea because she's the she's much more creative than I am. So <laughs> go uh, <laughs> go say to her. But um, but yes, uh, then we do get the beginning of the penguins like all I want in return, um, and Bruce very pensively watching here, uh, and yeah, that's it for minute thirty six. Um, that's oh, it. We're done. I guess it could, usually at this Whoa. point we'd ask the guests about their history of the movie and stuff. But of course, Phil, you kind of. Uh, can... I told you it was yeah, it was very melancholy and disturbing, but yeah. intriguing. Much mm -hmm. like uh, well, Batman I mean, Returns itself, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's how I felt as a kid, and um, I like the movie. I'm sorry if I mentioned I didn't like the movie last time, but I don't think I don't like the movie. Good. It's my favorite. I wouldn't allow you on if you uh, if you didn't like it. <laughs> That's the thing, though. Like, because we got the next movie, Batman Forever. Have you got any views on that that you want to we can haul back up out of the? I have some nostalgic. Well, I have some nostalgic feelings towards Batman Forever. It's not as it's not as strong as this one, but. Um, and it's not directly related to the film, but what did you? What was the question? No, I was just I'm wondering because you got anything you want to say about Batman Forever that we we can call you up on uh, next year when you show up. 
Okay, good, good. Because I was like, why are you asking me about Batman Forever? Does that mean I'm not going to be on Batman Forever? Because that, that would be no. very sad. Oh, no, of course we're having <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is like, this want to be um, like, you come in like, oh, Batman Forever is the worst ever. And then next year you'd be like, oh, I'm so into the movie. I've scarred one side of my face. I'm into the, <laughs> into the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want that heel turn. Okay, well, um, yeah. <laughs> it's Batman Forever. I mean, like, the only thing that I, like, relate to Batman forever did i say batman returns i'm sorry i'm getting tired i don't know why but um i had coffee but no, that was hours ago. um i i know um weeks ago and in, in, in like uh at least a week ago for mm. the listeners um <laughs> but yeah batman forever is i'm more related like for me the um the marketing was uh more so than the movie i don't think i even saw the movie when mm. it came out no no but the, of course, though, we'll be having you back for that next year. So save, save, save it. Save all you. Well, save yes. All you, save it. Yes. And, you know, guys, like, um, just like I mentioned, like, I started with coffee and we end here with me drinking water. So I'm on Team Nile. <laughs> and I have to say, yesterday night, I actually listened to your podcast, um, That Minute Returns, before I went to bed. Oh. So... That's an interesting fact for everybody listening. Were, were that right boring? There. You went right to sleep. <laughs> no, see, that's 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 no, that's not true. <laughs> I was actually really excited when Batman Bat Minute Returns returned. <laughs> yes, I'm surprised we didn't do more jokes about us returning. Actually, <laughs> mm. but there yeah. we've missed the boat with that now. By the time yeah. it's recorded, <laughs> let's make sure we do <laughs> Never mind. loads of forever your puns. <laughs> we've been always, we've always yeah. been here. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the internet, Bat Minute will live forever. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And before we do go, one last time, for this season at least, because we're having you back whether you want to or not, would you like to tell our listeners where they can find you yeah. and your podcast and any other work you'd like to promote? Okay, well, for the last time, um, I'm going to say you can go to Phil, you can just Google me and Phil Dragish. There's usually a lot of different things that I did. But uh, maybe you can follow me on Twitter. It's at Phil Dragish. It's very simple. Um, or, you know, on Instagram. I post stuff on Instagram, too. I, you know, and that's uh, at it is the man himself. And um, that is a joke on Dracula. Um, uh. the, the 1991 version, the one Francis Ford Coppola. Because yeah, that's, yeah. that's what Keanu says. He goes, look, it is the man himself. <laughs> and then... <laughs> And that's why I, didn't I changed know his reference in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and then he goes, "See, he's grown young." And it's just so, <laughs> like, you're too good at that. You need to go on the Dracula minute <laughs> yeah. when they do that. Uh, will they? Hmm. Mm. They, they, it's I, made. I, yeah. Well, I I don't like that movie, but um. <laughs> yeah, but you need to do the impression. <gasps> I suppose though you've yeah. had like a lot of you had a whole movie of Keanu to get the impression down. Really, I did. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Keanu, Keanu has you know. In in some movies, when he was younger, not so great. Now he's he's, he's an excellent mm. man. That's a, oh, you yeah. Could, uh, yeah, excellent. I, I ran. Oh, out of yeah. the thing is, like, Keanu is, um, like, is one of those things though, because people it's so easy to insult as an actor, but it's just like he's he's such a nice guy. Leave him alone. Like, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. Aww. I love him. I, I love him so much. He's great. He's great. Dracula, you know, has bats. This is Batman. Yeah. So we're good. We're all good. Oh, Everything yeah, is connected. The original version of yeah, Dracula, yeah. of course, played by Max Schreck himself. So, although for legal reasons, you hey. played Count Orlock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't fooling anybody back then. You know, you're not fooling anybody now. <laughs> well, but before we depart as well, we, we need to do one thing. Edit this bit yes. out, Niall. We didn't do the bit oh, I yeah, wanted yeah, to do yeah. at the start. We're going to say, we're not going to say it, so we're just going to go Bat Minute Returns. Right, right. So, so I'm going to, okay. I'll introduce so, that bit. And then we'll try and do it in sync and it'll be funny because we won't be in sync. <laughs> but let me okay. So join us again on Friday. Sorry, not Friday. <laughs> <laughs> so join us again on Monday. We'll be back with a new week, new minutes, and a new guest here on Bat Minute Bat Returns. Minute returns. Yes. It returns. <laughs> can I do it again? Because that was horrible. <laughs> yes, that was great. To be fair though, I can't just c- cut it oh, and then like, like, move it into sync. So, <laughs> Yeah, move, no, move it a little bit. Don't make it completely in sync. It's funnier no. the other way. Oh, and there's one thing There's one thing I want to redeem myself on. 
<laughs> I might put this in as a bonus. Good listeners, good listeners. I am very upset that I wanted to reference uh, Hello from the Magic Tavern, uh, the podcast, and I, I could not remember Usador's speech to introduce himself. <clears throat> so I am now going to do it in full. <laughs> <clears throat> I am Usador, wizard of the twelfth realm of Atheseus, master of light and shadow, manipulator of magical delights, devourer of chaos, champion of the great halls of Tarakus. The elves know me as Fiang Yalak, the dwarves know me as Zonan Hustanges. I am known in the northeast as Gasmuinius Maystar, and there may be other secret names you do not know yet. Yes, I remembered it. Oh. So we're just warming up the microphones, John, and then we'll be ready to record any second. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. God damn you. This is, oh man, this is the loudest I've heard John ever. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Riveting. Uh, yeah, I've had a Red Bull and I've had some CBD oil, so I'm no. buzzing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, it turns nice. out like, the party's gonna, John's going to keep this podcast going all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am having. A, I am going out tonight to a crazy wild night. <laughs> You're bringing morning, a new so, computer yeah. and like me and Phil so it's, like, <laughs> it's like it's been seven hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jesus Christ! <laughs> Bat minute live at the club. <laughs> Are we done with the podcast? I don't have to record anymore, right? Next time, a small man in a tall tale. A popular puppet protector spins the stupefied public a yarn. And an emphatic aristocrat seems to give a darn. But will our cravat-clad crusader see past the plot of this newly unearthed cobblepot? Find out next week. Same bat pod. Different bat minute. Okay, that wasn't so good. I can't do Christopher Walken at all. But listen to this. Stop. Since I got you here, I wanted to do my piano thing. And now you can't stop me. I'll do the piano thing. <laughs> here we go. Just real quick. Before we stop. Wait, here's Catwoman. Wait, wait. And then, wait, wait, penguin. We gotta do the penguin real quick. Wait, we gotta put the right instruments for And one more for the road. <laughs>